We'd like to welcome everybody tonight. We're going to get started here at Faith Baptist Church in Covington, Virginia. And yesterday was a real special day for Brother Billy. And to embarrass him, I was going to sing a different, or have you sing the Sheriff John version of Happy Birthday? But I don't know that, do you, did any of you watch Sheriff John as a child? It was a TV show. Maybe it was just a West Coast thing. There's this birthday song that starts out with, put another candle on your birthday cake. Does that, nobody has ever sung that. I know who Long John Silver is, the restaurant guy. Yeah, and he has a fish place in Roanoke, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, but not, not Sheriff John. Okay, Sheriff John was an afternoon children's show on one of the three channels we got, I don't know which uh -huh. one. And, you know, they had variety things and he would show a cartoon and you could send your child's birthday information in and he at the end of the show they would read off all these birthdays and then they would sing this song it was put another candle on your birthday cake your birthday cake your birthday cake put another candle on your birthday cake you're another year old today happy birthday to you you're another year old today so that's the sheriff john uh, put another candle on your birthday cake. But none of you have ever heard that? They have now. So let's sing that to Brother Billy. Instead of just the rudimentary happy birthday to you, we'll sing, put another candle on your birthday cake, your birthday cake, your birthday cake. Put another candle on your birthday cake. You're another year old today. Happy birthday to you. You're another year old today. All right, you got that? It goes like this. Put, oh, you got to face Billy. All right, turn around. Everybody look at Brother Billy. <laughs> Embarrass him really good. All right, Sister Elaine, you're not looking at Billy. <laughs> You've seen his face before. All right, put another candle on your birthday cake, your birthday cake. Your birthday cake, put another candle on your birthday cake. You're another year old today. Happy birthday to you. You're another year old today. Good job. Everybody give Brother Billy a big hand. Yes. All right. Well, Tonight we're going to be talking about Abraham again. This is part three. And in spite of everything Abraham did to screw everything up, God blessed him over and over and over, just like he does us, right? So I thought tonight I would sing, we would sing some songs that had bless or blessing in them just to make you all blessed, all right? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. He has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. This
this is hymn number two in our hymn book, which means that they thought it was pretty important, right? Number two. So you can, you can switch it to the next slide and we'll sing it. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, calls for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it. Mount of God's redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither to thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. On that day when freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face, full arrayed in blood-washed linen, how I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry. Bring the promises to pass. For I know thy power will keep me till I'm home with thee at last. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, 
showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they may fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Sing them one more time. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops falling around, but for the showers we plead. Amen. We have our mission moment now. Our missionary update is from Remy K. Capulli missionaries to the Philippines. Um, Kay writes that Romy flew back to the Philippines on February 22nd. She's still in Boston taking care of his sister, Susan, who's undergoing chemo. Her chemo treatments have been on hold due to low platelet count, but praise God, she's not in any kind of pain. Uh, the update on the Crossover Global, Crossover's New Year vision is to go global as the Lord leads. So. Romy took a trip to Thailand on March 3rd. This is what he wrote. My first day went wonderfully well. It was very challenging at first because they didn't know what to expect and vice versa. I know there will be a language barrier and I wasn't sure if what I usually do to share the gospel through the cross on the basketball court will make sense to them, but it did. The boy I witnessed to that you will see on the video following prayed and received Jesus in his heart. Praise the Lord. The discipleship part was good too. The games are hilarious because the soccer is the country's main sport. We played three on three, but everyone ran with the ball. Overall, God's grace and the Holy Spirit was working and was evident. We had six leaders that acted as coaches for the games. We also had a guitar player complete the team that helped me go through the seminar. It was very successful overall and God was present and the atmosphere was spiritual. The kids listened attentively and the hosts are excited to continue their partnership in reaching the surrounding countries. This week, a visiting American from Maryland, um, the week of March 13th, Michael Butts was there to serve as a coach for Crossover. He is six foot eight tall. So imagine the amazement of the kids in their eyes beholding a tall basketball coach teaching them skills. He was an MVP at Bucknell. Uh, as far as prayer requests, just continue to pray for Romy's sister and um, pray for Romy's health as he had some um, positive results from a test and that he needs a colonoscopy. He will be having that in the Philippines. And they just say, uh, thank you for your partnership. And it's a joy to be a part of the FBC missionary family. And uh, just please enjoy the video following. Thank you.
Over, Father, I just thank you for um, the love for the people uh, that they share, for uh, the heart to share Jesus that is there, Lord. We just ask that their ministry would continue to be uh, fruitful, that would uh, be blessed. We ask for their health to uh, be preserved, especially we think of this uh, uh, test Romy has upcoming, Father, and that you would uh, be with each of them. We pray for his sister, that her health uh, would be restored and that Kay could get back to the Philippines and uh, serve uh, with Romy in this uh, wonderful mission. And I ask these in Jesus' precious name. All right. Well, we are uh, wrapping up our third part, as uh, Steve mentioned. Uh, we've covered the, the fact that sometimes the calling of God uh, can be very different than what we think uh, our life is supposed to be. And then Blake last week uh, shared some devotional thoughts about what happens when we do not follow the will of God, how that ends up in uh, really destruction. And uh, today we're going to look at how does God bring blessing uh, over and above what we anticipate when we are obedient to be faithful to follow God. And so uh, I wanted to go over the uh, fifth benefit of ordinary daily devotionals. Uh, and then we'll go through the prayer and praise, and we'll actually start the devotional. So the, the fifth statement or uh, idea that they share is that it is sight training. Jesus really does want us to see and savor him. Savoring comes through seeing, but only the eyes of faith see him. Blind faith is a contradiction, at least biblically. Faith is not blind. Unbelief is blind. Faith is seeing a reality that physical eyes can't see and believing it. And faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So if we're going to savor Jesus, we must see him in the word he speaks. Faith is a gift. And like most of God's gifts, they're intended to be cultivated. Daily devotions are an important way to train our faith eyes to see the glory of Jesus in this 
in his word and to train our emotions to respond to what our faith eyes see. Keep looking for glory. Jesus will give you Emmaus moments. Uh, that's the road to Emmaus where he spoke of the Old Testament and uh, their eyes were opened. So uh, this week on our prayer and praise, which I, I could make bigger, I guess, not use my glasses. I uh, just wanted to point out a few things. Of course, with the uh, Romy and Kay is our, our mission moment. Um, we are uh, meeting next week here uh, for dinner and a movie, and we'll have uh, butternut squash bisque followed by uh, blackened chicken, Cajun rice, and some nice French bread. Uh, and then the next event is Journey to the Cross. That is Saturday, April the 1st, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, we're still looking for a few volunteers and some uh, accoutrements, some palm trees and uh, lamps and things like that. There is a list up front. Uh, so if you have some of that, uh, definitely bring that. Uh, and then we have the wedding. Jeff and Eleanor Bush, they, Jeff Johnson and Eleanor Bush, they did ask you to respond, s'il vous plaît, RSVP. I'm sure I'll get grief about my pronunciation. If um, And there's a phone number there. So if you're going to come to that wedding, Saturday, April the 8th, would you please RSVP? And then we have our Resurrection Sunday service. It will be back at well, I guess it will still be Covington High School at that time, but it will be Allegheny Middle School at some point. Um, but that will be at 10.30 a.m., so volunteers need to be there about 10 till 10, uh, unless earlier for the praise team. I think you guys are rehearsing the night before. I don't know. All right. So um, pay attention to messages for that. It's a busy couple weeks coming up. So, um, Yeah. Uh, Rachel did postpone her heart cath because of uh, Sonny falling and, and breaking his um, collarbone. Larry Clark, yeah, not Sonny. Sonny, his back surgery went well. I was looking at his name, and so, yeah, sorry. It came out as I was, uh, what, what do you call that when you're getting ahead of yourself? Your eyes get, your teeth something behind your eye yeah, teeth and you can't see like what that. you're saying. There's some kind of expression. Um, somebody knows the expression. They'll correct me. It was probably on Andy Griffith, which I've never seen, yeah, which I'm sure you know. Yeah. So, uh, we, we do have a, a nice thank you note from Brother Billy and Sister Elaine that's in the prayer and praise as well. Um, I'll let you guys uh, read that, um, and I think that is it as far as uh, events and new prayer requests that have come up, unless I am missing something. All right, well, would you go to the Lord in prayer? Absolutely. Let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for this time where we could spend just worshiping you through song, and I just... Pray for the many prayer requests that uh, are on the list, and I just pray for the physical needs that may be there of upcoming tests or surgery or recovering from surgery, whatever that may be, that you would uh, be with each individual and um, provide peace and comfort over them, as well as for those who may have lost lo a loved one or just... Uh, just there's a struggle there that they may be having that you would meet each need like we know you will. And I just pray for the various events we have coming up, like Journey to the Cross and then our Easter service, that through both of those that we can just find ways to share your word with others. And maybe through those events, somebody may come to know you and um, that we can just be a light for others through that. And just be with us during this time as we look at your word, specifically at Abraham, that we can learn something new that maybe we haven't thought of before and just open our hearts to what you would have us to learn. And I'll ask your name. Amen. So I was at home. Uh, I, I was making actually the, the butternut squash mm -hmm. bisque that we're going to have as I always preview these, these uh, recipes. 
and I get this text. And you, I don't, if you don't text, this won't make sense to you. But if you do, you, you get a pop-up, an alert that says you got a text from somebody. And it, it gives you like the introduction to that text. You get a few mm-hmm. lines, right? And it happened to be a text that was about Brother Billy's upcoming surgery. And it said, uh, Brother Billy has two options for his surgery. Going home, dot, dot, dot. I'm like, wow, that is some serious hand (laughs) surgery if that's option number one. (laughs) So the surprise ending was they were just going home to pray about which option they were. But it got me thinking like about surprise endings, like unexpected turns. And I remember uh, having gotten a gift from somebody. It was like a uh, uh, kitchen towel with a, you know, verse on it or something. Mm -hmm. And and the verse was Ecclesiastes 9-7. And I just want to read you that. And, 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 um, it says, Go, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Sounds very uplifting. Um, but if you actually go to Ecclesiastes and you keep writing, reading rather what Solomon was writing, it, it continues, Let your garments be always white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love, all the days of your vain life that he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever you, your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol to which you are going. <laughs> I was like, well, thank you very much for that gift. <laughs> Enjoy your, it's the, the only joy you're going to have is the joy you got right now because your destination is Sheol. And that was, the, that was the, the thing I got. Like, I don't think that person read the whole thing. So uh, it, it reminds me of this kind of lesson, but, but in the reverse. Like these, of course, mm-hmm. were... Uh, surprise endings that in in Ecclesiastes was a negative turn, and of course in Brother Billy's it was just funny. Uh, But uh, with Abraham, God gives him this blessing uh, that seems a a, a little bit, I don't know, vague? Like, Mm -hmm. uh, you think, boy, there's so huge things in there, but what does that really mean? What does that uh, really uh, come out to be? And in Genesis chapter 12... um, we read verses 1 through 3. Sorry, I had to turn back. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So there's this huge uh, promise to Abraham uh, that the Lord gives. And then he, he reiterates, gives him a little bit more information and a little bit later in Genesis uh, chapter 15, verses 2 through 6. We read, But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. You're going to have to hit the slides. Ours are are not uh, really going here. Sorry about that. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven. And number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted to him as righteousness. So if you look back at Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, this child of promise that he says will just... um, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so you will be... A blessing. I will bless those who bless you, dishonor you, and in the family, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So there's this um, kind of clarity that that God is is bringing to Abraham uh, in this. And then we get even further um, uh, if, if we look at these uh, 
two points, and, and I, I wanted to just kind of narrow it down. There's, there's at least seven big promises in there. Um, but I, I want to look at how this is fulfilled, how this has come to fruition uh, as we look back on what God did uh, regarding a national promise to Abraham, a personal promise to Abraham, uh, whether blessing or cursing Abraham resulted in, in blessing or cursing of people, uh, and what is this universal blessing through Abraham's offspring. So I just wanted to kind of think about these things before these devotional sort of questions. And the first uh, was that the national promises uh, were to Abraham. When we read through um, the Old Testament, like the book of uh, Daniel, we read that there's going to be these mighty nations that come about, right? The Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Uh, and, and the Lord promised they would come and they would go, right? And we're living in this post kind of Roman uh, era waiting for, um, you know, this, this restoration of something of Rome. Uh, but you think about these powerful rulers, you know, the, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, um, had air conditioning in his garden, right? He had natural air conditioning in his garden from evaporative cooling. He had uh, walls that were so like hundreds of feet high, wide enough to race chariots across. He seemed invincible. Mm -hmm. Abraham was a wandering homeless dude in the desert who left all the riches of the world that were with his family on the promise of God, right? If you were to take a look at, the, at a moment in time when Abram left all that he had uh, to, to go off on this, this wandering trip, and you were to take a look at um, the king of Babylon, you would say, certainly the king of Babylon is the one God is blessing. Or, you know, same thing with the Medo-Persians, Alexander the Great with the Greeks and his, you know, mighty army. Um, Abraham lied to Pharaoh about his wife because he was afraid of what would happen to him, right? Alexander the Great died because he couldn't take the fact there was no more world to conquer, Right? It, it just, I mean, radically different. And you think about, it, where are the Assyrians today? You know, what, what is left of Egypt? Some pyramids, right? And a golden casket of Tutankhamun. But even today, there are Jewish Israelites who are heirs of Abraham. There, there are still people today who can claim their heritage all the way back uh, to that time when Abraham was called out of Ur, and we believe that the Lord is going to, in this millennial kingdom, actually uh, deliver the completeness of that land territory to Abram. And I bet when Abram was walking around in the desert, he had no idea. I mean, absolutely no idea. And, and we know from the Old Testament that his people, as they saw things happening, uh, often gave up hope that, that that would be fulfilled. And the second promise were these... Um, personal promises to Abraham, things like, I will make your name great. Um, I think that is a, uh, a point of pride for many people. They want a heritage or a legacy or, or whatever. Um, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims all point back to Abraham as, you know, a revered uh, father of their kind of religious um, order. I doubt very much that Abraham wandering the desert would say that, hey, today, uh, 6,000 years later or whatever it is, that, that people would still know his name and claim him as their father uh, in the faith. So, so the, the, you know, the delivery on that promise, much greater than I think Abraham um, could have uh, anticipated. Third, blessing those who bless him, cursing those who curse him. I mean, we think about the plagues in Egypt. We think about all the wealth Lot had gained by being with him. Uh, and even Abraham's offspring through Israel. Israel was founded as a nation in 1945. The day after they were founded as a nation, all the countries around them went to war with them and lost in seven days. It's hugely. I mean, the, the battle was so upsided that Israel's like, will you guys just give up? I'll give you some of the land we won back, back if you'll just stop killing yourselves out here. Like that, I mean, that was that lopsided of a victory, right? Like there's no way uh, you could look back and think Abraham, uh, you know, would have anticipated 
uh, the degree of blessing or cursing. And, and honestly, the idea of the heritage, the seed of Abraham, right, as it, as it talks about in Galatians, coming through uh, Abraham in such a mighty way and for all peoples, not just uh, Jews. And so I wanted to, to read through uh, these little sections of Galatians just really quick uh, and, and get us to think about this universal blessing. And then, and then we'll pause for a few moments of thought uh, about these things. The scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Later, Paul continues in verse 15 through 16, talking about the law and promise, how, how the law doesn't change. Uh, to give a human example, brothers, even with a man-made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it has been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring, singular. It does not say and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring, who is Christ. So I imagine when God makes this promise to Abraham, he's thinking that he's going to have a lot of biological children that are somehow going to be high up in government and uh, you know, ruling like pharaohs. Or, um, but no, actually, the offspring, singular, that, that came died on a cross. Mm -hmm. That, you know, it was tempted in every way common to man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Paul says that it was, it was given to him because he was a, a man of faith, not because of righteousness of Abraham's, not because of anything Abraham had done. Uh, so the first kind of devotional question that I think of as, as, I, as I think about this, how has God fulfilled the blessings to Abraham in, in such great ways, um, would be to remove ourselves from thinking that it's our work or our multiplication. Somehow our effort is what's going to, to bring about this blessing from God, this increase um, from God. So when God counted Abraham as righteous when he believed God, and through Abraham, we all have access to Christ um, because of Abraham is what I'm saying, right? Because, mm -hmm. because he, he believed, right? Do you think that Abraham realized the extent of that blessing? You know, it'd be something to often consider on if he thought about it and sometimes, like you said, sometimes he may have not considered the totality of what God was blessing him with. And the thing that sticks out to me about it is he didn't let pride get in the way, like you said, of this big promise that God is making to him. So mm -hmm. um, I think maybe that Abraham had, didn't really consider the full extent of what the blessing that God was going to bless him with. Yeah, yeah. Um. Can you imagine the burden of responsibility mm -hmm. that would have been on Abraham had God revealed that whole plan to him? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Um, if God had gone to him beforehand and said, look, mm -hmm. here's the plan. My son is going to come down, um, take on human flesh, die for all of humanity, and he's going to come from your heritage, right? Your son is going to have sons, going to have sons and all that. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have all this land. I just need you to believe me, right? So he, he gave him this, this little, well, I mean, it was a big little promise, mm -hmm. but it was nowhere near as big as what he, you know, expected. He, he led them in the way I think Abraham wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that the way God fulfilled it, I think the, uh, the way God kept information from Abraham so that he could believe that it was going mm -hmm. to happen uh, was different or, or uh, unexpected, rather, for mm -hmm. Abraham. And I think the fullness, the extent of that blessing um, was unexpected. I just imagine, you know, Abraham pitching up his tent, having all these servants, all these sheep, right, all these camel and... Um, 
thinking 85 years old, 90 years old, you know, like no son, no son. He's tried his own strength, you know, it's not come, and God revisits him and, you know, promises him this child. Um, he sees what happens to Sodom and Gomorrah. He sees himself rescuing Lot. He's got all these trials that he goes through, and they keep getting, and, and God keeps promising him. But what God counts is his believing him as mm -hmm righteousness. And that is the way that we come through Christ. And, and so then that leads me to my next kind of thought, is that if God was going to fulfill to Abraham uh, something that was beyond his wildest imagination, you know, God reveals to us a little bit in Scripture about what heaven is going to be like, a little bit in Scripture about uh, what life will be like for us, in uh, what our bodies will be like. Um, but he doesn't give us all the details. And so I think like Abraham, part of why we don't get that is because we wouldn't believe. It would be too, mm -hmm. too good to be true, you know, that expression. There would be too much blessing for us to handle, and I think it would freak us out. Mm -hmm. And and so we, we put kind of human understandings on um, what we think of when we, you know, read about streets of gold or... Um, you know, a uh, house with many rooms up in heaven or being in the presence of God. And, um, what are some of the ways you could think of that, that we might be missing, like the, the glory of heaven? I think a lot of the times when we miss it is often when we're focused on ourselves and our own desires and what we want on this earth and sometimes when we focus on those things and so on us minded instead of on God's mission for us minded mm -hmm. well we can lose sight of all of that and his yeah. mission for us to lead to when we die and go to heaven yeah I think in a lot of times when we look at the way the world works too mm -hmm. there's there's no free lunch right right there's always a, a, a hook in the worm mm -hmm. if you will and and, and you, you almost feel like maybe this is too good to be true. Maybe um, it isn't faith alone through Christ alone, by grace alone. Um, maybe there's, maybe I'm supposed to be, um, you know, doing something first. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a risk there, but I, I think we also run the risk of, well, if that's all there is, and you don't really know what it is you're gaining in eternal life, your life mm -hmm. doesn't really change, and you aren't willing to go uh, literally to the ends of the earth for Abram, right, out to Egypt, mm -hmm. following after God. And we let the troubles of our life be greater than the promise of our eternal life, mm -hmm. right? We, we let the, the trouble of our current financial situation or our, you know, um, kid is having difficulties or um, we have a health problem that we don't, you know, see mm -hmm. how we're going to get through or um, we let that become the more important thing to us than the promise of eternity, right? We, we are devaluing what God really has promised in this eternal life uh, in heaven with Christ. And all we're seeing um, either is we need to do more work to earn it, or I have it for free, it doesn't really matter, right? Like Paul going to the Corinthians, he wasn't taking pay from them. So they were saying, well, maybe you're not really apostle because because it's free to us for you to be here. Uh, I, I think we can err on both of those ways. And, you know, I think it's, it's helpful for us to, to really think about, you know, heaven is, we are, we are in our bodies, new bodies. Mm -hmm. We are working, right? But the, the work is not strenuous or toil. It's fulfilling mm -hmm. and satisfying. And, it, you know, I, I think that, Spending time thinking on, you know, both the ends of that, working for is not right, and not changing because of it is not right, and right in the middle is the promise of God. Um, faith in Christ has this, this blessing of eternal life. And so as we look at the overabundance of Abraham's uh, fulfillment, mm -hmm. right, like uh, how much more the promise of heaven, right? How much mm -hmm. more the promise of eternal life, um, when we believe God, and, and I think that has to uh, change our, our heart posture, that has to change our, our um, 
what was the, the, he said, sight training, right? When we look at the world, we're looking at the world through our human eyes and we're not looking at them through our faith eyes of the promise of God. And so we aren't willing to um, live where the Lord has us now as his promise to us. Uh, so that, um, that's the thought. That's the, 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 the point that I hope that we can share and get you to think about some, get you to you know, go into uh, the Bible and read about the life of Abraham and see uh, the many trials the Lord brought him through and, and the ways that that led up to his being able to believe God um, and have it counted to him as righteousness. And then by way of you know, changing our heart to not, not think that this promise is so big that we have to do so much to get there, but also not to disregard the value of that promise that on the other side of faith, we don't change, you know, we don't seek after the Lord and uh, seek to be sanctified uh, for that. So I will close the online stream and in, in prayer, and we will have some prayer time corporately together. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your promise of uh, this blessing to Abraham, this uh, promise of his offspring, uh, who is Christ Jesus, who is our Savior. Lord, I ask that the promise of eternity would allow us to consider the burdens of today as a vapor, as just a whisper in time. Father, that, that we would be able to take up our cross daily, uh, to allow your word to be the light to our feet, not our own eyes. Lord, I ask you to work on our hearts, to set before us this vision of, of heaven, this vision of eternity. Lord, to give us the faith uh, of Abraham that, that allowed him to leave, or allowed him that even after laughing at God, he continued and, and stepped out, and, and you fulfilled that promise through Isaac. And then, Father, that, that we today have a Savior through him. Lord, I ask that we wouldn't be burdened down by the weight of glory in a way that paralyzes us, uh, but, but that spurs us on, Father, that, that gives um, strength to our hands, strength to our hearts, courage to our hearts, Father, that when we read your word, we don't seek it to justify ourselves, but we seek in your word the, the challenge to who we are and how we are now, that we might learn to obey you more fully in everything that you've taught. Father, I pray for your glory to be manifest today and all those who are joining with me in prayer. Father, I ask that your hand be on all those who are aching in their hearts, aching in their bodies, Lord, that the promise of an eternity in heaven with you in a, a body that's so incorruptible but raised incorruptible would be a promise that we can look forward to, uh, Lord, with, with hope. A hope in the certainty of it even though we can't see it right now. Even though we don't feel it in our sore feet and hands and, and hearts and whatever else is aching us, Lord. I ask, Father, for your heart uh, to be, for our hearts to be like your heart, to be broken for sinners, uh, to be willing to be uh, bold in proclaiming your truth, both in word and in deed. Father, that our life would be one that reflects the greatness of your love for us and not one of selfishness, of love for ourselves. Father, I ask these many things because you did bless Abraham beyond measure. And your word has that same promise to us that it would be pressed down, shaken about, overflowing, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray today. Amen. Thank you to those who joined us online. If you're here with us together, we will be uh, having a few moments of prayer together.